In 2035, London's skyline will be nearly unrecognizable. A forest of gleaming towers will stretch into the clouds, redefining a city once famous for its low-rise charm and centuries-old spires. Over 600 new skyscrapers are set to rise above the city, more than the total number built in the entire 20th century. What's behind this unprecedented vertical surge? And how will it reshape the city's silhouette? For a city fiercely protective of its heritage, this radical transformation might seem surprising. Yet necessity, ambition, and innovation are now driving London upward. From the city's financial heart to the edges of Paddington and Stratford, glass and steel giants are multiplying, each with its own promise of sustainability, smart technology, and futuristic design. But as the skyline ascends, so do the questions. Is London losing its soul in the shadows of these towers? Or is this the dawn of a bold new chapter in its architectural evolution? Today, let's dive into the rise of London's new skyline, uncovering the landmark skyscrapers that will define the city by 2035, the forces fueling their creation, and the legacy they are poised to leave behind. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The shift towards skyscraper development in London can be traced back to the early 2000s with the construction of towers like the Gherkin and later the Shard, which upon its completion in 2012 became the tallest building in the United Kingdom. These developments signaled a turning point. What was once deemed incompatible with London's historic character began to be reinterpreted as a necessary part of a modern, evolving city. Today, as we look toward 2035, the number of high-rise buildings in various stages of development reflects this new vision. The vast majority of these towers are concentrated in areas such as the Square Mile, Canary Wharf, South Bank, Nine Elms, and Paddington. Yet the vertical expansion is also reaching beyond central London, with emerging clusters in outer boroughs like Croydon, Stratford, and Brent Cross. These towers vary widely in design and function, with many incorporating mixed-use elements, residential, commercial, hospitality, retail, and even vertical green spaces. At the heart of this transformation lies the Square Mile, London's historic financial district, where a new cluster of gleaming skyscrapers is taking shape. Known informally as City Cluster, this zone is being reshaped by an ambitious architectural vision that blends innovative engineering with sustainability mandates. Recent visualizations by the City of London Corporation illustrate a futuristic skyline dominated by glass and steel giants, some twisting, some slanted, others stacked like blocks in a Jenga game. It's an eclectic mix of forms and styles, breaking away from the boxy international style that dominated the 20th century. The crown jewel of London's new skyline is one undershaft. Nicknamed the trellis, due to its distinctive exoskeleton framework, this 74-story behemoth will soar to 309.6 meters, making it the tallest building in London's square mile, and matching the Shard as the tallest in the UK. Designed by Eric Perry Architects, one undershaft is not just an office tower. It promises to become a new cultural landmark, offering Europe's highest public viewing gallery and a panoramic restaurant at its peak. Even more impressively, the building will elevate its entire base to allow a pedestrian plaza to flow underneath. A lush public garden on the 11th floor will serve as a green oasis in the sky, accessible to everyone. Another major player is 100 Leadenhall Street, often referred to by its nickname the Diamond, thanks to its sharp, faceted exterior. Standing at 263.4 meters, the tower's prism-like design will create a glittering focal point in the heart of the city. Developed by SOM Architects, it will feature a high-performance facade engineered to reflect light in dynamic ways. Changing appearance with the shifting sun, the design cleverly tapers away from key sightlines to preserve protected views of landmarks like St. Paul's Cathedral. Inside, the tower will be equipped with intelligent climate systems, communal workspaces, and leisure areas, an embodiment of next-generation office design. Equally transformative is 55 Bishopsgate, 
a soaring sculptural tower set to reach 269 meters. Unlike many of its glass-heavy counterparts, 55 Bishop's Gate stands out with its sinuous, almost organic silhouette. The 63-story building includes commercial space, an integrated ecosystem of terraces, sky gardens, and wellness facilities. A particularly innovative addition to the skyline is 99 Bishop's Gate, a 240 meters tall tower. While modest in height compared to its neighbors, this development is revolutionary in concept. Beyond 54 floors of commercial use, it will house a six-story cultural pavilion, a space dedicated to art exhibitions, performances, and public engagement. Another project drawing attention is the Slab at 55 Grace Church Street, which breaks the mold with its horizontally layered design. Rather than piercing the sky like a needle, this tower fans out with stacked volumes that incorporate retail, office, and public spaces. Its step terraces will be adorned with greenery, giving the illusion of a vertical park, while offering rare outdoor gathering spaces in the heart of the city. Other notable entrants include the Tulip, a highly debated tower designed by Foster and Partners. Although not yet approved due to concerns about heritage impact, this 305 meters tall structure, shaped like a slender stem topped by a bulbous viewing pod, would become a futuristic visitor attraction, complete with rotating gondolas, sky bridges, and educational facilities. While currently stalled, the project remains emblematic of the daring and imagination driving London's vertical aspirations. One of the primary drivers behind this skyscraper boom is necessity. London's population is expected to exceed 10 million by 2035. With space at a premium and greenbelt protections limiting outward expansion, the city has little choice but to build upward. High-rise residential towers offer a solution, albeit a controversial one. Critics argue that many of these developments cater primarily to foreign investors and luxury buyers leaving little affordable housing in their wake. Yet developers and planners are increasingly aware of this perception and are incorporating affordable units and social housing quotas into large schemes. Moreover, new planning frameworks in London encourage mixed-use development, ensuring that new towers contribute to the city's social and commercial fabric, not just its skyline. Importantly, these high-rise zones are being built with supporting infrastructure in mind new transport links, upgraded public spaces, pedestrian-friendly design, and public amenities such as rooftop parks, cultural spaces, and retail environments. What will London's skyline look like in 2035? Visualizations released by the City of London Corporation depict a glittering horizon of towers. But this transformation is not without its critics. Some conservationists and urban theorists argue that the rapid proliferation of skyscrapers threatens London's historical identity and its World Heritage sites. There are concerns about overshadowing and the loss of human-scale streetscapes. Others worry about the homogenization of global cities, where skylines increasingly resemble each other, regardless of local culture or context. London's planners, however, are taking these concerns seriously. Tall buildings are carefully vetted through planning committees, and visual impact assessments are a critical part of the approval process. Skyline impact on St. Paul's Cathedral, the Tower of London, and the Westminster Palace is given particular scrutiny. Meanwhile, architectural firms are encouraged to create buildings that are not just tall, but beautiful, site-specific, and reflective of London's unique spirit. The skyscraper boom is not just altering London's appearance, it's changing how Londoners live and work. Post-pandemic hybrid work models have redefined the office. Today's commercial skyscrapers are designed to offer more than just desk space. They are social hubs, wellness centers, and creative environments. Many office towers now include gyms, rooftop gardens, shared kitchens, co-working lounges, and even nap pods. The goal is to draw people back into the city post-COVID with buildings that enhance well-being, productivity, and community. Residential towers are evolving too. 
Developers are offering vertical villages with concierge services, swimming pools, private cinemas, and communal gardens, all in the sky. While such amenities are still largely restricted to high-end developments, the trend is pushing expectations across the board. At street level, these towers are being integrated with public plazas, shops, cafes, and cultural spaces to avoid the dead zones that often plague high-rise districts. As London races toward 2035, its skyline is poised to become one of the most iconic and densely vertical in the world. But this transformation is only the beginning. With advancements in construction technology, smart building systems, and sustainable architecture, the city is laying the groundwork for a future that balances innovation with environmental responsibility. The continued rise of mixed-use towers, blending residential, commercial, and cultural spaces, signals a shift toward more integrated urban living. Future skyscrapers are likely to feature zero-carbon designs, AI-powered infrastructure, and even modular adaptability. At the same time, city planners face the challenge of preserving London's historical character while embracing its high-rise evolution. The question now isn't whether London will grow taller, it's how thoughtfully and inclusively it can shape that growth. If done right, the skyline of 2035 could mark not just a change in height, but a powerful redefinition of what London represents in the modern world.